Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to take this tangent base and turn it into this. I'm going to show you how we accomplish that, but first hit that intro. As I said in the intro, appreciate you guys returning back to follow us along in this tangent series. We're just going to jump right into it. Uh, pretty much today we're going to be tackling some bamboo, some marbling, some rocks, also some highlighting within this little kind of medallion emblem in the center. We're going to be doing a little bronzing on some lanterns, so it's going to be a pretty packed video. Uh, for the most part, you know, these are steps and applications that we've learned previously. So this is going to be kind of more of a relaxed, casual video. So I hope you guys enjoy. After applying the base coat, I'm just going to go back over repeatedly with this um, shade and really all I'm going to do is just keep hitting those low spots, driving the recesses back and also creating kind of some grain on the bamboo so to speak. I want this bamboo to kind of look old and weathered so I'm just going to keep going and making little tiny uh, lines all along where I can and then mopping it up after it dries a little bit. You'll see here in a few minutes, it's going to give it a nice little grain look. Um, you know, the more you do it, the more it will start to look like wood. So you don't want to get too carried away, but you also don't want it to just look like yellow sticks. As you can see, we got a nice little grain pattern going on the bamboo. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bring out our lighter color again and kind of hit the highlights. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of highlight streaks in here, kind of break up the darker spots on the bamboo. I'm gonna to touch kind of all of the raised surfaces on the bamboo. A little like, uh, I guess, chambers in between each little spot on the bamboo that's raised up, the edges. And like I said, any spot that I feel like might be a little over dark, I'm just going to go and throw a little bit of highlighting in there. And just, you know, use your best judgment. And the best thing you can do is use a reference picture of actual bamboo for this.
we're doing now is we're going to take this poster tag and we're actually going to apply it to our base. We're going to create a seal because we're going to do some marbling on this medallion kind of centerpiece. We want to make sure those are good seals and then that paint leaks under. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually take a baby sheet or a baby wipe and I'm going to dry it out with a blow dryer. And you'll see that typically the baby wipes stretch one of two ways. That way it doesn't have much stretch. Turn it sideways, it's got a lot of stretch. And when you dry this out, you'll be able to kind of tease this out a lot to almost kind of look like those uh, Halloween spider webs you would get. You don't want to pull too hard because then you end up just tearing the thing in half. You kind of want to wiggle it like that, stretch it apart, and the bigger the holes, the less kind of marbling effect you will have. So kind of keep that in mind and just play around with it. So now we're just gonna add our two colors that we want to create the marbling undertone, or I guess the, the actual marbling in the stone. I've gone ahead and picked kind of a darker muted turquoise and a muted magenta purple, so to speak. The reason why I picked the muted colors is I didn't know how much this was gonna pop through. And I didn't want the main focal point of this base to just be the marbling in the center and take away from everything else. So you'll actually see here, I do it muted. And when I do some more marbling later in the video, I actually take it a lot brighter, a lot brighter. I'd also like to take this opportunity to kind of just talk about what we're gonna do next. Really the big thing that you want to remember when marbling is let this dry completely before you put on the baby wipe. Also, when you do your next step with the baby wipe, uh, make sure it's as tight to the surface as you can make it. So if you need to cut around and fit it around, say those rocks, absolutely do it or it is going to just blow under and make it look white. Now you're just gonna choose what kind of marbling rock you want there to be. Do you want it to be a white rock, a little bit of gray and white? I'm just gonna start with a little darker gray, gonna kinda hit some spots, and then I'm gonna move progressively brighter and brighter. Kinda almost till I have a white rock. I want those contrast colors to really pop through, so I'm gonna use white. You can do black, you can really do whatever color you want. It's hard to not want to peek and you look like you're completely covering all the work you did with white paint. Just believe in the process, trust that it's going to look good and you end up with this. Ooh, this looks clean. Mm, I can already feel it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that marbling. That's satisfying. Very satisfying. Uh, but anyways, okay, enough of that. All right, now that we all feel awkward, uh, let's just move along to the next part. So now we're just gonna go ahead and trace this inlay with a green tesseract color. And I'm gonna do this probably four or five times to achieve that brightness. And then the next section, we're just gonna brush on some brass. Just gonna cover the lanterns and then we're gonna hit it with a little bit of our shade. Oh, 
Same rule applies here as any other previous video where I've used shades or washes. You kind of want to push them into the recesses and I'm going to go ahead with a brush after and kind of mop up any standing wash that's on a flat surface. We just kind of want to make this look aged. We don't want to make this look muddy. Now when it comes to the stone there, we're really just using different types of grays. So I just want to kind of separate the rocks from the stones and all the different elements that haven't been painted yet and separate them from each other. So these rocks I'm putting on a little darker gray. The pebble stone down at the bottom I did a lighter gray with some random kind of darker and lighter gray spread throughout. And then I'm just going to throw an entire wash all over the thing. And same thing, taking a dry brush after and wiping them off the top surfaces of the rock. We just want that wash to go into the recesses. As you can see, I've added a little bit of red and some blues to some random rocks around there. And now I'm just going to highlight with a lighter brown and darker brown, just random areas throughout the print. We just want to make these rocks look as real as possible without having the larger boulders blend into the smaller pebbles. Really, you can achieve this with any color you want. I just decided to go kind of a brown, dirty look to make that marble pop a lot more. And I want the actual samurai to really stand out. So I decided I wanted to add some resin actually to the fountains and put a little life to the base if you will. So I 3D printed some water lilies that I can drop in here and then decided to mix up some 5 minute epoxy dropped a couple of things of blue ink into there. And what I've created here is kind of a little makeshift, I guess, mold so I can have the water pour out the side of the broken fountain. And all I did is just took a straw, cut it in half, but took some petroleum jelly. That's the, the main ingredient where your resin's never gonna break free. And then I just taped it into the shape so the tape will hold it and poured it and filled it in. And the nice thing about five minute epoxy is it sets up in five minutes. And now I'm just going to pour it into the fountain and just kind of use this toothpick to pull it where I want it to go so it actually looks like water. The big thing is making sure that that resin doesn't go all over the place because it is very sticky and hard to clean off, especially when you have a painted surface that hasn't been sealed. So in this next step, we're going to actually do the marbling on the rest of the base, and I'm going to use those brighter colors I talked about. I love you, you love me, we're a happy family with on the mic and when we go, you know the rain no stopping us, right? Because we party So uh, anyways, so that's what the marble looks like with the brighter colors. And after seeing it, I really wish I would have gone a lot brighter in the center, but it is what it is. So in this next step, we're just taking some scenic blue and just putting glue all around the bottom and kind of dripping this flocking on. I want it to look like there's some vegetation going on in here. I'm going to add some shrubbery, some tufts, all kinds of different things you'll see in the final product. And uh, here's, here's what it looks like at the end. 
I appreciate you guys sticking in with me to the end of the video. If you like what you've seen, go ahead, like, subscribe, ring that bell notification. This was a fun project. I really enjoyed doing this. It took a lot longer than I thought, but yeah. well, remember guys, take care of yourselves and each other. Peace and love. Until next time.